That's odd, the bristle-haired officer said as he stared at the hollow display and the data readout that scrolled by, fading out as it reached the surface of the small desk in the transport's security kiosk. What did you say your name was again? Snow. Denman Snow, the stranger replied. You have it right there, next to my picture and my stats. Yes, well, the bristle-haired guard stopped the data scroll and grabbed at the pic that was displayed prominently in the file. He stared at the pic, then stared at the stranger, then back at the pic. He humphed and continued to scroll before he became frustrated and banished the hollow altogether. Not even a smudge on your record. I play by the rules and keep my nose clean, Snow said. A little too clean, the bristle-haired officer said. Maybe get out more. Find a mate, go to a club. Stop harassing transport passengers. Like I said, I was only having a chat with the man. Don't know why he took offense, Snow said. My colleague will find out, the bristle-haired officer said dismissively. But other than being annoying, you've done nothing that I can hold you for. Good thing, Snow said. We've reached the station, and I have a cab waiting. A what? The bristle-haired officer asked. Taxi, Snow said. But the officer's puzzled features didn't change. A roller for hire? Kip driver, got it the bristle-haired officer said, and nodded with understanding. Taxi? That one of those city planet names? I guess so, Snow said. Am I free to go, officer? Yeah, go. Get along with you. The bristle-haired officer opened the kiosk and pointed. Out of my sight. And stop being weird. Snow smiled, nodded, left. Only plan on seeing the beaches, Snow said, as they hurried off towards the closest exit. Not gonna see much in this storm the bristle-haired officer called after Snow. Snow gave an over-the-shoulder wave and stepped off the transport car and onto the station platform. The air was thick and warm and charged with electricity. Snow felt the hairs on the back of his neck stand up, and he moved quickly to one of the many comms staggered along the platform that held up the long, wide roof. It was at that moment that Snow wished he'd come armed but no way to sneak a pistol worth a damn onto a public transport. Scanners would have found the weapon instantly, even with the shielding tech that all his pistols contained. Egfac had a very strict no-weapons policy and had developed tech to back up that policy. It should have made the planet safer, but as the hairs on the back of Snow's neck continued to stand up, he knew the safety was an illusion. Weapons were plentiful if one knew where to look or who to come. Snow studied the platform. Not a single person around. That should have been a good thing, but it wasn't. There was no reason for the platform to be deserted. Not at that time of day and that time of week. There should have been at least a dozen other passengers milling about, either headed towards or coming from the expanse of beaches that were only a short roller ride away. The oncoming storm could have been a reason for the lack of others, but Snow knew better. He fixed his eyes onto Mr. Gore Bunn as the man finally exited the transport. Mr. Gore Bunn completely ignored Snow and walked briskly towards the station's small building. Snow cursed under his breath, glanced around, still saw no one, then moved to follow. Snow made it a meter before Mr. Gore Bunn reached the station building's doors. The doors slid open with an automatic hiss, and Mr. Gore Bunn was inside. Then the world turned bright white, and Snow was lifted off his feet and sent flying against the side of the transport that had just started moving again. Pain radiated from Snow's back as his shirt, then his skin, was nearly scraped free of his body by the moving transport. Twisting hard and fast, as the vehicle's momentum sent him spinning and ricocheting back at the station platform, Snow managed to tuck a shoulder and roll a few meters to avoid getting his skull bashed in by the platform's brutally hard surface. What he didn't avoid was the burning debris that represented the remains of the station building. Piles of scorched refuse sat there, and Snow found himself smack in the middle of a circle of flames and thick acrid smoke. His shirt in tatters, he ripped it off his body and tore a long strip to wrap around his nose and mouth as the smoke assaulted his lungs. Snow squinted through the pungent clouds and tried to find some semblance of life, but all he saw were the battered and burnt bodies of the few travelers or workers that had been waiting inside the station 